Now, we've seen as I've been talking about the lessons we can learn from Elijah, the great prophet, we saw that when he arrived at Mount Horeb, he experienced God in what was for him an unusual way. He experienced God in a way that wasn't loud, that wasn't long, that wasn't demonstrative. In fact, despite the earthquake that the text tells us God was not in the earthquake, despite the wind, God was not in that, despite the fire, God was not in that, he heard a still small voice and we're specifically told the Lord was in the still small voice. What that tells us is sometimes we fixate on the dramatic but we need to learn to pay attention to the subtle ways that God moves. Just because it's subtle, just because it's quiet, just because it's not dramatic doesn't mean it's not God. That's important for you and for me to know because our God doesn't come the same way all the time. That's what's wrong with church folk. When you experience God a certain way, then you go around trying to sell that to everybody. That's why we come up with these fads in the church. And have you ever, have you been slain? Have you been this? And have you been that? No, but I've experienced God. And just because I didn't come your way, I've been to churches, they tried to knock me down best, best they could. Because they don't think you're experiencing God till you're on the flow. And I have told folk, look, if the Lord takes me, I'm ready to go down. If it's the power of God hitting me, I don't have the kind of pride where I won't go down, but I'm not going to let you push me calling it God. Anyway, what am I supposed to be preaching? All right. God doesn't have to be in the dramatic in order for it to be God. And he heard the still small voice of the Lord. I want to let you know right here at the outset of what I want to share in these next couple of messages is that God does some of his best work without fanfare. Amen. God does some of his best work without fanfare. God doesn't have to introduce himself in a dramatic way. When you are packing the power that God packs, he doesn't have to try to impress anybody. And so what you need to do is to know that I'm in touch with God. And don't worry so much about how he presents himself. Just know that he is presenting himself. And if God is with you, it doesn't matter who or what is against you. God does some of his best work without fanfare. Remember when he introduced to Israel their Savior? Here they were hundreds of years in bondage in Egypt. Hundreds of years, they're crying out to God, oh Lord, deliver us from this bondage. When God is ready to answer that prayer and deliver them, he starts with a little baby floating down the Nile River in a little basket, homemade kind of basket that could float. And he's floating down the Nile River toward the shoreline where Pharaoh's daughter is down there bathing herself. And they hear the cries of a baby in a little box. And one of her servants grabs it and gives the baby to her. And she knows what she's looking at. She said, this is one of the Hebrew children that my daddy is trying to kill. Because here, because Pharaoh had said, all of the newborns in Egypt, I hear they, they're believing for a deliverer. And so I'm going to make sure there's no deliverer coming. I'm going to kill the babies. And here's this child. And she knows what she's looking at. But when God is working, it doesn't matter what you know. It only matters what he decides. And she said, this is a Hebrew child, but this is going to be my child. And she raised the deliverer right in Pharaoh's household. That's how God can move. God doesn't have to be conspicuous. But next thing you know, when Pharaoh is full grown, he's back there saying, God said, let my people go. Our God can get it done. Don't worry about how he does it. He does some of his best work without fanfare. That's how, that's how Israel got their greatest king in, Mo, in, in uh, David. 
That's how they got David. When you first meet David, he's not impressive. When you first meet David, he's sitting on the side of a hill with his instrument playing music because his only job is to take care of his daddy's sheep. His older brothers are out doing exploits and, and more impressive looking and all that. So much so that when Samuel comes to Jesse's house, the Lord said, go down to Jesse's house because I'm going to have you anoint the next king of Israel. Amen. Gets down there and tells Jesse, oh, tells Jesse what the Lord said. And Jesse does what you do. He says, all right, well, if one of my sons going to be the king, let me give you the biggest, brightest, best one. And he brings out his eldest boy. Samuel took one look at him and said, that's not him. Because Samuel is discerning. He's not looking at what the eye sees. In fact, the Bible says in that passage, that's where you get the phrase, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Some of y'all got to get that. That's why you still messed up. You looking at stuff instead of discerning stuff. I'm preaching already. You're waiting for me to preach. I'm already preaching. You looking at stuff, okay, let's see the shoulders, let's see this, let's see that. Oh, no, you looking instead of discerning. He trotted, he trotted out his, his top boy, his oldest, then his second, then his third, then his fourth, then his fifth. Then his, He kept on trotting out boys, and finally Samuel said, is this all you got? And then Jesse said, well, you know, there's my youngest. But, you know, his attitude was, I know you're not talking about David. Listen, when the world treats you like that, when folks look at you and say, I'm not impressed, don't sweat that you're not impressing them because you don't have to impress them. You got to know that I'm called according to divine purpose. God is up to something in my life. Y'all don't have to know my name. You don't have to be impressed with my credentials. I got an audience of one I'm living to please. And when I please him, everybody else has to just go along with his program. That's what you got to know. Next time folks look at you and they're not impressed, say, that's fine. My, my job description is not to spend my life trying to impress you. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all are in trouble now because you're always trying to get yourself in the front of the right people. If I can just get an audience with them, if I can just, if I can just. No, no, you got to realize I need to please God. Your job is to please God. After that, see who else is happy. Because anybody who's happy when you're pleasing God, that's cool. They can roll with you. But if you suck in your teeth and roll in your eyes while I'm pleasing God, you can go head on somewhere. God does some of his best work without fanfare. So David wasn't very impressive looking. But by the time we get through, everybody knows the name David because God does some of his best work without fanfare. I could, I, I could. Hey, thanks so much for viewing today. I hope you were blessed. Listen, if you want to receive all of the videos that we post, simply subscribe by pressing the button on your screen. We'd also like to encourage you to share this information with others so that they too can be blessed. God bless you and we'll talk to you soon.